What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we are going to talk about Prescott, Arizona, one of the high de high altitude destinations in Arizona that people like to live. Uh, it's been up and coming, but it's it just never quite gets over the hump. But today we're going to talk about it because people from California, some of them from California want to move to Prescott. They say, no, I'm not moving to Phoenix. I'm not moving to Tucson. I'm moving to Prescott. So we've also got some people back east asking about Prescott. So it's getting out there that Prescott's a place to be. I think it's beautiful up there, whether I would live up there full time or not. I think it's a little bit too small right now, but in time it could be a real fantastic place. Yes, I am wearing a Bitcoin shirt for those of you who are wondering, and it is coincidence. I'm not doing it on purpose, but <laughs> there you go. So if you're thinking of moving to Arizona, you can subscribe to Living in Arizona. You hit subscribe and you hit this bell to get notified every time a video comes out. If you don't hit that bell, you might not get notified. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in here. You can see I've talked about Tucson here recently, Sedona, some of the more dangerous wildlife, some of the worst and best, Scottsdale, Arizona dating, etc. And so in this particular video, we're going to talk about good old Prescott. Let's do this and start right here on Wikipedia because yeah, Wikipedia, you know how it is. So it is in Yavapai County. According to the 2010 census, the population of the city of Prescott was about 40,000 people, 39,000, right? So it's the city seat of Yavapai County. In 1864, Prescott was designated as the capital of the Arizona Territory. This is before Arizona was a state, replacing the temporary capital of Fort Whipple. The territorial capital was moved to Tucson in 1867. Prescott again became the territorial capital in 1877. That's not 1977, 1877, until Phoenix became the capital in 1889. So, way back when, Prescott was, you know, one of the original boom towns in, Ari in Arizona, so much so that it was the capital. Another thing that Prescott's known for is having the world's largest rodeo. That's one thing that it's known for. It's the climate, it's right there, on the uh, is in the Bradshaw Mountains of Central Arizona at an elevation of 5,400 feet. That means it's a mile high. So, it's a above a mile high. Just like Denver, you're gonna you're gonna actually see this picture here shows you just how beautiful it is down there in Prescott. I mean, Prescott's a beautiful place. Uh, I would I would have to say that Prescott is beautiful. It's just a little too cold. It does snow there. I mean, it's a mile high. What can you expect? And it's kind of interesting because just outside of Prescott is Prescott Valley, which I would not call um, forest. I would call that more high desert or plains like Denver. You know, when you go west or east out of Denver, you go into the plains, you go west, you come up into the Rockies. So Denver sits right there where the plains meet the Rockies. And you know, if you go too far east, you, you start coming into the plains. Same kind of situation in, De in Prescott. So there's a lot of history to explore there in Prescott, but um, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that you're going to want to do when you go there. So there's a pretty good uh, website with information for this stuff here. It was called Vacation Idea. I'm just going to use their list because it provides some strong visuals and a good representation. So downtown historic area. They do have this walking area right next to Whiskey Row, which is where you go out to party at night, but they have this area where the old uh, county courthouse is. It's kind of historic. It's a nice place to walk around. There's a park there, and they're saying that's the number one place to explore when you go to Prescott. I don't know if it's number one, but it's, it's an interesting point of reference. Then you have Watson Lake. I like to go to the lakes around Prescott. You know, go kayaking, get in a canoe and do that. They also have a museum called the Charlotte Hall Museum. That's an open air uh, museum dedicated to the history and local folklore of Yavapai County. Then one of my favorite lakes in all of Prescott, Lynx Lake. I like Lynx Lake. Here they go. They're representing good old Whiskey Row. They've got Thumb Butte Trail 33. Goldwater Lake, another lake that I actually enjoy. 
the Heritage Park Zoological. Kind of close to there in this area, maybe about 35, 40 minutes, is a place called Out of Africa. Out of Africa used to be out in Fountain Hills. Now it's down there in uh, good old Prescott. So, Fippin Museum, Prescott, Arizona. You got Frontier, Frontier Days, Prescott Frontier Days, world's oldest rodeo. So, the Prescott Frontier Days, billed as the world's oldest rodeo, has taken place over the, four, over the 4th of July weekend every year since 1888. The rodeo features eight fantastic rodeo performances and associated events that take place over a week's time. Did I say it was the largest rodeo or the oldest rodeo? I know it holds some sort of distinct, distinguished... Uh, remark and it might just be the oldest. I can't remember if I said oldest or or biggest. Then you have some other museums. Prescott National Forest. I really like exploring the P Prescott National Forest. I mean that seriously. It's a little bit vast and it's not there's not a lot of people out there. I mean there's cabins out there but you go out into the Prescott National Forest and it's just you <laughs> and a, in a cabin and then another cabin a mile away. But that's cool. I, I, it's it's true wilderness out there in Prescott, and I, I mean you could drive down there. You, you instead of taking the I-17 and then going uh, up there at Cortis Junction, making the going west, you just go off off the beat off the highway and you take that road through the Bradshaw Mountains to get up to uh, Prescott. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's 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 dirt road. Do it. <laughs> I, I mean it's not a challenge. I mean it's it's. Beautiful. You'll get to, you'll get familiar with the Bradshaw Mountains. You do that. You don't have to take I seventeen. You take the dirt road. I've done that with my dad. He used to like that because we had fr he has friends that had like cabins out there, um, and we would go stay with them. Prescott Brewing Company. Yeah, yeah. I mean these brewing companies. They're not like the best. They're not like Heineken or they're not world renowned yet. Uh, none of the Arizona breweries are really making a name for themselves. I mean, I've yet to taste a beer in Arizona that I'm like, hey man, great job making that beer. So these breweries, yeah, they make beer, but I'll let you know. I haven't tried the Prescott Brewer. I'm not saying it's no good, but I'll let you know when I f find something that's worth writing home about, right? Uh, this Pr Prescott is about an hour away, 45 minutes away from the Verde Valley, which is where the grapes are growing, you know, the wine country. So that's something to keep in mind. There's a, It's an up and coming area, that whole Verde Valley to Prescott area to Sedona. It's all kind of merging together. And if you were, it's it would be like if you took Denver and you said, all, you, you started integrating Boulder and, and some of the other uh, suburbs of Denver. That's kind of what's coming together with Cottonwood, Sedona, Prescott. It's not, there's mountains in between there, but you could almost say that it's in the area the size of metropolitan Los Angeles. So in the area the size of metropolitan Los Angeles, it's just not filled in. You know what I'm saying there? But it's, it's that kind of size. It's got that kind of potential to be like a big metropolitan area when all the cities fuse together and it probably will happen. They've got big plans for that area and it's it's really possible. That would be, if there was one place in Arizona that I would say has a lot of potential to become a, 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 a future city or a city of the future in Arizona, it would probably be Prescott, Cottonwood, Camp Verde area up to Sedona. That whole area right around the Bradshaws has potential to be one of the next big cities like Tucson and Phoenix. They just it just hasn't had that that surge that building boom that's going to take place I think there and it's I say that because they've got plans to like build super corridors super corridors are not just freeways they're super corridors where you put in like four or five lane freeways that's in preparation for massive growth so it could be like a Denver one day up there right now it's not so all you investors who got time to sit on some property there you go. Bucky's Casino, things to do in Prescott, Fort Whipple Museum. You can see there's quite a few museums, Granite Mountain Trail and Prescott Farmer's Market. Let's see what TripAdvisor has to say. Yet again, they got Whiskey Row, Charlotte Hall Museum, Lynx Lake. Like I said, I like Lynx Lake. They've got Watson Lake above Lynx Lake. It's a matter of preference. Um, here's something, Prescott, Prescott, Pea Vine National Recreation Trail. There's some interesting places north of Prescott. I want to say it's called Chino Valley. 
you don't know what Chino Valley is, you can take a look at it. Uh, maybe I can get a map pulled up here of Chino Valley. Let's see here. Prescott. Let me see if I can pull up a map of the Prescott Valley or of Prescott so I can show you more in detail these places that I would like you guys to explore if you're thinking about going to Prescott. So right here's Chino Valley. In between Chino Valley is some interesting landscape that you can pick up on around, I want to say it's like, yeah, right here. If, if we just take this, the, let's, uh, let me move this real quick. Put the little orange guy on the road. Let me see if I can show you guys. Is this it? Yeah, this, see how this granite dells, see how they got these like, it's almost like granite garden. It's almost like a natural granite garden. See how it's kind of cool like this? You've got these granite rock formations that, um, I like it. I like it in this area. It's on the way to Chino Valley and it's literally just outside of Prescott. So, I mean, within, you just start heading north out of Prescott, you start driving through this area. There's Willow Creek Reservoir. There's Watson Lake. So you can see there's, even if we're looking at the map here, you can see there's some development taking place. These, these homes, these cookie cutter homes like they build in Phoenix. And, it, and it's just it's just a matter of time before the growth still uh, starts happening more. They've got this land cleared. They probably cleared this back in 2008 and they had to stop everything when the economy hit. Prescott got slowed down a lot by the economic uh, slowdown in 2008. But you can see how it's forest right here in central Prescott. But as you start to go out, you go in, into like arid country. So it's green right here. That's what I'm talking about with the whole... Uh, Plains. So this is like the plains area right here. Prescott Valley, it's now for there's no forest. There's no greenery. This is an area where you could see this whole area right here just filling in with with houses and, and commerce and stuff. And so that's that's kind of the way that I've looked at it. If if I'm looking at like the future growth of Prescott and Prescott Valley, this whole area right here could fill in pretty quickly. It hasn't happened yet, but it, it could happen real fast. I mean it's it's, it's all flat land and ready to be developed. And you can see they've already started developing it. Now, I'm pointing this out to you because I'm showing you what the potential growth could look like in a place like Prescott, especially as the exodus out of California continues and the exodus out of the East Coast and Wisconsin. A place like this, these people, when they move to Phoenix, it's a little bit too hot for them. And then, you know, they want to get away from that heat. But then they start to miss the cold a little bit and then they want this middle ground and then they find it in a place like Prescott. A little bit too cold in Sedona, a little bit too hot in Phoenix, or I'm sorry, a little bit too cold in Flagstaff, a little bit too hot in Phoenix. So they find it in like Prescott Valley where they find this neutral weather. So, and then over here you have the, the cottonwood and all that. See how it's kind of connected, it's kind of close. This is, this is where they grow the grapes. So there's a little bit of a, a mountainous region here, which would be kind of like the uh, San Andreas mountain range that's in between San Fernando Valley and Los Angeles, right? You got to drive through those mountains to get there. But that's kind of, the, these are two areas that are primed for, met, for metropolitan growth. Sedona all the way to Prescott Valley. And if I zoom out, you can see how close it really is. I mean, you've got Cottonwood here and Prescott Valley. It's not very far away. Now the area that I was talking about previously, where you have Cordes Junction, right? So right here, you, you're at Cordes Junction. This is Cordes Junction, I-17, you head left on the 69, you head west on the 69. You know, you don't have to do that. You can you, you can go right here on the Bumblebee. This is that dirt road I was telling you about, it's 50, the 59. I don't know if you can drop the yellow, the orange guy on the Bumblebee highway here, but if you do this, Let's see if we can do this. Oh, I don't think Google's Google Earth has gone down there. But yeah, you start going down that road on the Bumblebee and you just take that all the way through here. I think you drive through the Bradshaws and you end up going all the way up into here and you come into Prescott, right? See this Mount Union, these roads up here? This is the place I was talking about exploring. You, you go out here and explore in this forest. And like I said, it's pretty desolate in the Bradshaws, but it's beautiful up there. I liked it. My dad used to take us up there. Let's see if I can get the orange guy to go down there just so I can show you. 
See, see what I'm saying? It's beautiful, right? This is Arizona. I mean, this is just forest for for miles and miles. Just going coming off this mountain in the Bradshaws would have never never thought that this place existed in Arizona. But it's you know this is an hour and a half to two hours outside of Phoenix. But you can see why I said it's worth it to drive through here because it's it's like I mean this is God's country up there is basically the way you could could say it. I mean. I say that because it's in, on a on a summer day or on a spring afternoon. This is just heavenly up here, and people people build their cabins up there. But it doesn't look like anything from Google Maps from afar. But as you start to zoom in and drive around, you start to see it's really beautiful there. So this is Prescott, and if I was to take you guys down here onto Whiskey Row or in the area of downtown Prescott just to drive around, it's kind of like driving around. I mean, you guys like to see this kind of stuff. Um, you can also do this yourself, but this is uh, South Montezuma, and you can see what it looks like driving around in Prescott. Here's that courthouse that I was telling you about that they said is the number one thing to do. People, You just walk around in this park area, and then you've got restaurants over here on Whiskey Row. So this is Whiskey Row right here. Got Harley Davidson, Wild at Heart. You know, people out here are cowboyish country a little bit um, yeah I mean it's I ate at this restaurant over here where is it this is the heart of <laughs> it's an old rustic town I mean that's that's what you get when you go to Prescott anyways guys I mean let's go ahead and talk about the cost of living real quick so I can wrap up this video and you guys can get an idea this is, this is the prices of homes. You get a four bedroom, three bath, $259,000. That's cheaper than my home uh, that I live in now. A little bit bigger, so that's what you get, kind of quality. You, then you got something even real cheap, $49,000 for a two bedroom, two bath. Up in, that's up in that little area I was telling you about the, the pine country, if, you, if you're into that. It does snow up there, so it will get cold. I mean, I've been up there in the snow for sure. But look at this, $91,000, three bedrooms, two bath. Not too bad. I mean, if we look at it, look at the view. I mean, you wake up to that every morning, you could probably be pretty happy, huh? It's definitely a cabin, but hey, it is what it is. I mean, these are the kind of things you guys can get. Ninety, you know, ninety-one thousand dollars. Some of you might get excited. Some of you might say, "No, not for me." Then they have these modern homes, these truck homes, right? So that's three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Single family built in 2004. So there was a lot. There was there. There was a lot of these kind of homes like this that were built in 2004, 2005, 2006. Then slowed down in 2007, and then it never really picked back up. But but that was when the build. That was when they had their first building boom. When they start building homes like this in these communities where all the houses look the same, that's when the sign of the building boom is coming. And I think it's going to happen again up there because it's it's one of those areas that's that's primed. It's like. Why move to Denver? You could move to Denver, but you could also move to Prescott. That's what I'm saying. I compare Prescott and Denver very similar, except Pres or Denver's way more developed. Prescott's just up and coming, and it's got the potential to be just like that. Obviously, you've got other places around the country like Boise, Salt Lake City that are in that same kind of mile-high climate. But in Arizona, you can get the desert and you can get a place like this. For me, I would say this, have your main residence in Phoenix, have a cabin in Prescott or in the north or in the northern part of Arizona, right? That's kind of how I would look at that. Um, so cost of living, let's go ahead. They're saying that the overall cost of living in Prescott is more expensive, but I don't get where they're getting that. They're just pulling raw data, I guess. They're saying groceries are a little bit more expensive than the national average. They're saying healthcare is a little bit more expensive. Housing is more expensive. I mean, I don't, I don't know where. They're saying the median home cost in Prescott's three hundred fifty-four thousand, but we just looked at Zillow and it was nothing like that. So, utilities are a little bit cheaper. Transportation a little bit cheaper. So, um, Prescott Metro, Metro. They're even calling it Pe Metro Pe Prescott now. So. Um, Job market in Prescott, I think it could use some improvement because there's not a lot of jobs up there like there could be. Household income in Prescott is 45000 National average is 53000 So people 
make a little bit less than Prescott. Unemployment rates higher in Prescott than the national average. Job growth. There is a there is a bit of a job growth hap- more job growth happening at 2.87%. Future job growth, they're saying the future of Prescott's job uh, job market is looking pretty optimistic though. So that's good. Anyways, guys, thank you for subscribing and liking this video. For those of you who have been around for a while watching these videos and discovering Arizona with us. And we'll see you guys next time. And thank you to everyone. Oh, ask a question if you have any.